So we'll start out with the uh, obvious first question. Can I have a show of hands for who hasn't been to either of my previous two talks this week? Okay, this could be a very interesting session for you if you've not had a chance to catch up with the, uh, the slides that are now online. But since I'm only just announcing the URL now, I'm guessing you've probably not seen them. So th this is the follow-up to the two sessions I had earlier this week, trying to say now we've opened up a namespace for some future library, SDD2, and potentially more namespaces if we need them. What do we think should go in there? So I gave a notion of some language features that I thought would be essential for building a new library to bring encouragement for the committee to move those language features forward as fast as possible so we can start having library proposals built with those built in from the beginning. And the second session was looking at what do we think belongs in that new library anyway. So the whole goal of this session is given that this is a good community for the real cutting edge library developers. And it's a very participative place for search library development. I figure this is a really good place to get a sense of a vision for what we want a new standard library or not to look like. So I'm really hoping from this session to have so, be able to draw together some distilled experience, a distilled vision, and hopefully produce a paper for the next committee meeting or the one after that. Which, uh, one last show of hands, do I have any volunteers to be co-authors with me on such a paper? Can we, can we have Bryce make a quick note of those hands? Uh, and we'll set up a mailing list or something hands. after the... All right, put your hands back up. I won't be a co-author, but if you nope. want me to introduce the guy, mm -hmm. I think it's important for this, if it's going to be a vision, it's not one person just saying, I'm dictator, I know just what's right. I want to really pull together a consensus here so that we can send a good message to the committee that you know, it's a bunch of people who are thinking this, not just the crazy guy in the corner. <laughs> well, the crazy guys all over? No, it's... So I say that the, the main intended structure of this session is basically I was thinking about feedback on the two sessions I gave earlier, although I didn't get through all the material I wanted to get through in those sessions, and then trying to distill that into some kind of direction. So fundamentally, I want this session to be very participative, almost driven by the floor, but I've got a few guiding questions I think would be a good place to start. So we'll go with the first one, which is, how important is it to have a vision for what we're going to do with the new standard library in the first place? There wasn't really an overriding vision for STD. It just kind of grew organically, and it seemed to work out mostly okay. He hit, hit upon some of the pain points and niggles and so forth in my session yesterday, but the library is far from being a disaster, so maybe we don't need an overlying vision. <coughs> Perhaps it's still useful to have one, even, we, even if we don't think it's vital. Or perhaps we actually think it really is vital to have a coherent view as we set out upon the new library so that if we're going to build this foundation for the next few decades of C++, we want to be sure the whole thing itself is built on a coherent foundation. So I'm looking for some comments, observations from this, and probably going to try and get a quick poll up towards the end of, you know, pick a position and we'll see which one the consensus of the room heads towards. Or add extra options that I've missed. Over at the back. I, I think as as uh, all new features are channeled through um, a small group of people, usually they, they implicitly bring their own vision along and make sure that the whole thing is coherent. And I think that's how things, I guess that's how things have happened so far. So I'd go in there probably helpful. But can we have the, the microphone over at the back corner, sorry? Sorry, Mr. Microphone Monitor, you're going to be very busy running around the room today. Okay, hi, yes. Uh, I, I was hoping that you will be you will be repeating the question, but I will be no, I, passing the microphone to. I, I, to I need this session to be participative okay, and running okay. live, essentially. All right. Yeah, I, I think you um, necessarily uh, have a vision in, implicit in the group of people who are um, filtering through all of the features that get added, and that's and that's how STD one is not a total disaster. Um, so I would go with helpful but not essential. Uh, good doubt. So I have the opposite opinion. I, I think that um, uh, with the exception of the STL, which had a clear vision because it came from, uh, you know, uh, Stepanoff and a, a few other collaborators, um, most of it has been more ad hoc. And we have this consistent problem in LEWG where we have um, 
we have issues that come up because people say that this part of the library doesn't match that part. We chose, we made this choice with this vocabulary type. We made a different choice with that one. And th these kinds of things would really benefit from some, some clear guidelines of the, the kinds of designs we want and the kinds of design decisions we, we want to adhere to. So uh, I'm not sure that what I would consider we need is a vision per se, but I would argue for perhaps three design principles that we keep in mind. And number one is conceptual elegance. Number two is mnemonic elegance. In other words, uh, do the, for example, the order of arguments for member functions in one container sort of similar to the, the order of arguments in, in another member function in a, in a different container. So that if I learn the interface in one part of the library, the interface, there are no surprises in a different part of the library. In other words, minimize the memory overload, uh, the overloading that's required by the, the programmer. And finally, the third one would be uh, to keep in mind the target, our customer, which is the the day-to-day -day C++ programmer and their trials and travails and what they need to keep in touch with in order to do their jobs day to day. Uh, you know, in my particular position, uh, there's some sort of a bifurcation in, in experience. There are very experienced guys and very inexperienced guys. The very inexperienced guys look at C++ and they're just like completely overwhelmed with it. Some of the more experienced guys have been using C++ for years, but not modern C++ and they're overwhelmed by some of the new features. And, and I think we should keep a thought towards providing simplifications where we can. And to, for example, Alistair's proposal yesterday with regard to allocators. I think it makes a lot of sense to think about it because it, it simplifies the interface that the library exhibits. So the three possible ideas. I think that visions are absolutely essential because they narrow scope, but we have to be really smart about how we narrow scope. And um, Bob offered one vision of how we, we narrow scope. I'm not going to be as presumptuous as to know what the narrowness should be, but I think we need one. So I have been teaching C++ about 10 years ago, and one of the big things that I noticed was most people who started out started to try to do the simple things, such as opening a file, reading from it, using strings and so on. And at that point, there was still no way to construct an, an input file stream with a string. Those things have been fixed since, but we have to keep in mind that the language as a whole is getting more complicated, which means that people will have to learn more things from the language itself. And the language library should be uh, helping in that, in having more coherence, being essentially just simpler to understand. If you know one part of it, you can use that knowledge in understanding the rest. So I would say that a vision is, is imperative. Well, I'm not seeing any other hands or input. Um, just a reference back to the original STD library having you know, a, a clear coherence about you know, the containers and algorithms from the STL. Uh, as I said, there was also a similar coherence about the, um, the IO streams, but it was a separate coherence. Um, we tried to have a similar coherent vision as we built the concurrency part. As, so we've got potentially multiple visions, and sometimes they got to line up. And then we got things like standard strings stuck in the middle. So I'm not sure how informative that is, but it just struck me as the information was coming through. Um, with a lack of any other feedback coming in here, I'm just going to try to have a quick show of hands. If, do we think these are three reasonable, distinct positions to poll on? Let's just go for a quick show of hands then. Who thinks that for looking ahead towards STD2, STD1 did fine without the, an initial over <coughs> coherent vision, and we can build... <coughs> Assemble SDD2 as people come up with their own visions accordingly. Oh, those for that opinion. Following uh, the, the three questions on the slide, basically. Pick one. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. all, right, all right, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's see if anyone in this room is yes, no, or anything. Okay, no, we're going to poll. Uh, it's a three way poll. All right. Just, you know, which has the, the stronger consensus behind it? I don't want, also makes one, que three questions, then not six, or it's easier to I'm doing a five-way poll on each one. Not doing a five-way poll on each one, no. Uh, 
I, 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 I might do five-way polls a little bit later, but certainly not on this one. Um, any hands at all for the first one? Put your hand up now or forever hold your peace. Okay. We got one. Those who believe you know, having a, a vision up front is helpful but not essential. One, two, three. And those who believe such a vision would be vital for a new library. Oh, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm 12, voting vital because it 13, 14, more closely, it more of the three options, it most closely rec, uh, matches my view. But I would say more rather than vital, I'd say extremely desirable. So since I'm the odd one who voted uh, in favor of the first proposition, my thinking about this is that <clears throat> I, I'm afraid of people with a vision. Uh, what I like about the STD library, the way it is now, and about C++ is that I can use uh, what I need from it without, while ignoring other parts. So I would say, yeah, having a vision is, is, is good, but if it, um, if it is drawn into uh, having things that each each thing knows about each other, what it's it's better to have no vision than a bad or a dictatorial vision. That's the reason why I voted for one. So we have one last hand at the front, and then we're moving on to the next set of questions because we do need to keep making progress. Sorry, First, people. I have I have a sentence. Um, you said that you like it because you can use what you need without uh, while ignoring other parts. That can be part of the vision. <laughs> so, so I'm very relieved that my next slide says, if we have a vision. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping the first question would go that way, but I, it was until we poll people and see, we don't know. So that was good. What do we think the essence of such a new library should be then help, to help perhaps guide people forming that vision? Is it a full reimagining of STD2 using all the new language features baked in from day one, and therefore potentially di quite distinct? Is it an as close as possible, but no closer tweak of STD? So if it eff effectively a, a clone that allows us to new use the new language features without being concerned about package breakage, but really trying to minimize it? Or is it just you know a brand new namespace where we can put new things and new idioms and not worry about name clashes with other things in namespace STD because overload sets matter. And for instance, with the ranges library, we're going to want lots of algorithms with very similar names to those we already have. And we don't want to be too concerned about is this going to deduce as an iterator or a range? And it, we don't want to be dealing with those kinds of problems. So it's a great place to do new things while the old thing just stays around. It's not going away. Uh, or alternatively, fourth option, we don't need a new library at all. Just keep growing STD, apply all the new language features through STD. STD2 is a nice thing for the future if we ever need it, but we're not there yet. These were the main point iterations, spaces I saw in the space here. Do we think I'm missing anything before we open this up for a broader discussion? Go. I think there's John something here? right between one, oh, sorry. I think there's something right between one and two. Uh, do you want to elucidate a little further? Yeah, uh, Reimagining STD means it could look nothing like STD. And as close as possible means we're going to give up on things because we're constrained by... No, I think if it looks nothing like STD, it's not a reimagining. It's a completely different thing. And that is essentially what... Well, I guess yeah. I don't agree with you. Reimagining means put that away, let's start from scratch. No, it says, let's start from scratch, but inspired by what went before. Inspired, but not in yeah. the same form. It's not plug replaceable. But, but that, that, yeah, that's the intent that it's, I, yeah, it's, not, still say it's I, not going to be plug replaceable. That is the intent. Well, either one is not plug replaceable. Yeah. So what I'm saying is there's something in between that says, we're going to make major changes, yeah. mm. uh, but we're not going to gratuitously just say, Let's do something completely different. Well, let, let's say the first one means major changes and we're open-ended because we've not dug into how deep those major changes would right. be, but we're saying prepared to take then major changes to is one. the first. But it's, it's important we have consensus on what we think the first bullet means. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to open up my hands to express views on this. We'll start here. Oh, sure. So 
I think uh, we do need to reimagine STD. We know there are some parts of it we like. I think if you look at successful languages and successful libraries, the key thing is that they enable, they don't close things, they open things. They enable application users to build on them. Uh, and there are some parts of STD that get that right. Error code springs to mind and algorithms were great for the time. Maybe they differ for ranges now, but, and there, but there are other parts like the allocator model that just kind of didn't work. So one of the key things I think to keep in mind with any STD2 is the ability for, the ability for people to build the language up beyond it and not kind of have parts that are closed off. <clears throat> So yeah, I also want to speak in favor of one and there's specific things that I have in mind that I think a lot of people maybe have in mind but haven't considered like um, IO streams I think should be rebooted entirely. I think we should just have something that works uh, better uh, in every conceivable way because that is definitely possible with IO streams. And, and there's a few like uh, sort of low level decisions like um, size T is unsigned. I think we could uh, make a, a use inputter T instead and and get just better code gen for everybody for free. Uh, so I, I want to leave us open for those kind of radical changes. And so that's why that's why my favorite one. In which case, I'm going to ask you, would that not correspond with bullet three to say, I want a whole new IO stream library. I don't want to put it into STD. I'll put it into STD too. But I don't need to replace STD unless I'm doing a complete reimagining. Is perhaps bullet three appropriate for what you're suggesting? Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually having a hard time understanding the difference between 1 and 3, and now that you say that. 1 would copy. Well, for example, if I wanted oh, to well, put in a fixed implementation of the containers, and I wanted to have all the containers there, and, you know, say all the constrained vocabulary types, so I have a new tuple that's built using concepts, and perhaps it's not a, that would be in one of the first two. Whereas for three, we're saying, no, if it was right in the first one, we're not going to try and fix it. Just things that completely change go into namespace to SDD2. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I, in that case, yeah, I think three sounds pretty good to me. But I also think that, like, you know, we use, for in, in the example of size T, we use size T, like, all over the place. And so we would have to, like, clone a substantial, substantial mar uh, amount of stood into stood two in order to have a stood two that has containers using input or T or, or something, because otherwise you'd have all kinds of, of conversion warnings and stuff. You try to use the old part of the library. So I, I, I can't, I can't say, but I, I think I like one and three now. now I, I think cloning containers is my classic smell for one or two. Okay. But around behind you, we'll just basically try and keep the microphone moving around in a circle. Yeah. I, um, I think we've learned a lot over the last 20 years, and while multi++ is and always has kind of been a multi-paradigm language, you know, there have been definite shifts um, in, in, in the way we think about things and the way we design and do things. And so I think uh, a reimagining is pretty vital. Or that's, that's what I like. If we can bring the microphone around. Go over to Lisa and then you can come back along. So, so I can... Okay. Um, I guess I think the real difference I see between one and two is a question of what our priorities are. With one, we're saying that our priorities are about the future of coding in C++ and we are willing to um, break things about the past of coding in C++. Two seems to be saying that our priority is strongly on the past and we are willing to um, leave off some things that would improve things in the future for that. Is that correct? I, I think that's a good summary, yes. Thank you. So the thing that I'm afraid of, if I'm looking at the first option, it's basically doing everything that we already have again in a sort of incompatible way. And if I look at other communities that have tried to do the same, and I'm th specifically thinking of Python, you might get a rift in the language, which basically means your user base splits in two, and it's very, very hard to get anywhere. All the language becomes more complicated. You have two types for everything you could possibly have, and many code bases would never get updated, which means that the entire language doubles in complexity, and that will be way worse than just keep using SCD. Keep moving this way. Sorry, Lisa, you'll be right at the back now. <laughs> I think the new language features fundamentally change so many things that they make trying to support the STD current interface and grow it um, too constraining. Um, especially, I mean, constexpr, no except, 
STD doesn't properly deal with our values in all cases right now. And, and you know, there's, there's more things coming down the line, structured bindings, concepts. These are fundamental changes to the way we write interfaces, not to mention optional and variant vocabulary types. Which I guess means that the option I've missed is do two, but do it in STD. Except that we do some breakage in STD. Could be a missing option for the poll. We'll see when I come to poll at the end. So I think these are false alternatives. There's definitely room for all of them in STD2. Um, I think that a lot of the stuff that we spoke about, we know that, st that STD has bugs. Like, just things that were designed badly. From studmax to certain algorithms not returning output the output iterator that they compute um, to, you know, all, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, not to mention the wrong design of allocators. Um, it, and other stuff, right? So, if we're thinking about saying, let's... Let's do STD2 right. That means let's learn from everything that came before. Like, we know we need vector. Like, vector is awesome. Except currently it's got some warts. Let's fix those. But the problem is that vector now being in STD2, because it's incompatible with STD1, is going to become the new vocabulary type for library interfaces. And that means that the minute you have a new library, dealing with an old code base, you need to copy that vector into the new representation and pass it onwards and perhaps cast it all over the place. Um, granted, that's pro the, the new thing's probably gonna be a template and not care because the outer interface of vector is gonna be all almost the same. But my point is we should be thinking about what we do when we create new vocabulary types, even as we try to fix them. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, I think one of the <coughs> the things that one of the things that Java brought when it was first came out was it said, "Look, we're going to give you a well thought out library that we can y give you to guide development." And yes, they did it wrong three times, but what they did do was it made it easier for starting developers to have a place to know where to go to. Every time I try to teach C++ to C developers, I have to special case string. And I have no really good reason to do that. Um, so whatever we do, if we can do it within the context of saying, look, here are the broad strokes that we've learned from. And we apply those, and we give ourselves space to grow on it. At least people, as they're coming into the language, will have a, a better footing than, oh, you need that? Go over here and you know, go to the local language expert to figure out where, they, where they're supposed to get the pieces from. So I want to make three comments. First, with regards to, to sort of interoperability between std and std2. I do think this is a substantial challenge, but I think that it's a challenge that can be mitigated by uh, uh, picking the right design. So, so as an example, um, uh, things like string view um, and interfaces based on things like string view um, would allow us to avoid uh, a lot of the, 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 the interoperability issues for contain between con uh, containers. Um, second point, I think there's a, a question here that is, um, uh, sort of implicit that, that I want to call attention to, which is, um, should std2 at some point in the future, maybe, maybe 10 years from now, 20 years from now, should std2 be a self-contained library? That in, in, in 2030, should I be able to write, like, C++ code where I'm not writing std in std2? Like, where once we've had sufficient time to address all of the things in std, and if we find some something in std that we determine is perfect and we, we would not need to update it, we would just move it into std2. Um, and then my, my second Can I point... Can to that point? Uh, yeah, my second point is just like one sentence, which is just that also the time frame is important here that that we might want to look at some sort of incremental approach. And uh, yes. I think it just might be interesting to bring up the next slide to also be thinking about that in the context of this discussion based upon what Bryce just said, which is... 
once we figured out what's happening with STD, what's also happening with STD? And this possible, these questions possibly inform each other. That's right. I just want to reiterate something that um, that Alistair has said in the said yesterday is that there are things in in namespace STD that the compiler has carnal knowledge of, and those those will be very very hard to get rid of. I agree that those things should not make, and I think it's fine. Well, then then the answer to your question is never. I, I can, yeah. I can envis envision a migration strategy if that is all that is left of STD, but it would be a decade-long project once that is eliminating the. And I'm optimist. Oh, I mean, I've seen optimist. <laughs> anyway, back to Bryce. Um, yeah. um, I think I, just the, the only other thing I was going to say is, is that like I think timeline matters here. How long do we? How long do we? think it'll take for, or how long should we aim for it to take until STID2 is complete, and what do we think the lifetime of STID2 uh, should be? I think STID2 should last... That would be the following slide. Yeah, I think STID2 <laughs> should last us at least until 2030. So one of the issues I see with the standard library currently is that it tries to do everything in a way that is usable by everyone, but not an ideal solution for anyone. So for example, I come from the niche of games, and in games, we generally don't use runtime type information, we don't use exceptions, and we don't even use standard containers because they're not optimal for our use cases. And so I'd like to see a STD2 that makes it much easier to have um, standardized like versions of containers and such that are more applicable to a specific niche and actually serve that niche well, as opposed to being kind of a mushy approach that's okay for everyone, but not great for anyone. And um, one of the big issues with this now is like uh, for containers, you basically have to be a language expert to correctly implement a container. And that's just not great. And there should be some better way of doing that. Hands? Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And I would like to just challenge the, the preconceived notion or the, the notion we say a lot, which is that we like vector. We don't really like vector. We like contiguous memory. Yeah. We don't like the yeah. fact that a vector isn't small buffer optimized. We don't like that it, 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 it's vector is of its time. And there are so many language features now like const expra, uh, like our values, like optional, um, that could be, that could change the interface of vector significantly. Any other hands before I try polling? I would like to actually see multi-way polling for each of these just so we can get like, uh, I feel like yeah, choosing I, I one of I think that's a good is, choice. Okay. Yeah. Because it was very hard to try to figure what I was distilling here. So it was just a rough draw of the questions anyway. And I, I don't think any of these are crystal clear and having a, a five-way poll on each might be the best way to see if we can draw a feeling of the room. Anyone anything to say before I do a five-way poll on these? Well, that'll give me time to describe how a five-way poll works for those who've never been to a standards meeting. Uh, do we have a microphone? I have a very quick uh, alternative also. Um, I don't think we can keep everything in STD because we want some breaking changes. But it could be that what we want is to only put breaking changes in STD and keep new stuff that doesn't conflict, uh, sorry, in, into STD2 and keep new stuff that doesn't conflict in STD. It, it's a possibility, yeah. that's all I'm saying. So this might be uh, perhaps a bit late to add a, a final last option, but I would hope that the essence of STD2 would be to be the new interface that a new developer learns and then doesn't need to know anything beyond. Yeah, so I'd like to state my agreement with Gaspar. I'd like to see a stood too, where as the language improves, we can also improve the libraries. Um, and having something separate where we are allowed to make breaking changes, I think would prevent us from ending up in a situation 20 or 30 years down the line where we end up needing a stood three or a stood four. 
and kind of perpetuating this problem. The current, the current way to do that, of course, is experimental, steady experimental. Yes, but once it's no longer experimental, it's fake. And I was thinking more, OK, so we need a second revision of vector. Fine, we put it into STD2. We screwed up vector again. We need to put it into STD3. Meanwhile, everything else remains at the version it was because it's fine or something. I don't know. Like, well, I see. As it reminds me of the option that I forgot to put on here, which was something I didn't mention yesterday. Now that we have inline namespaces, we have a much better sense of how to do ABI breakage moving the library forward in the future. And if we're prepared to accept API breakage as we revise standards as well in the old version will be around in the old inline namespace, we could just start by porting the whole of STD into STD2, because in STD, we haven't been using the inline namespace. If we need the new ABI, we've got to start by just porting everything, lock, stock, and barrel, into STD2, and then just putting fixes there. I think it's a horrible answer, but it's another one that we can have on the... Um... Uh, if I can give a Oh, you might think that's Alan. how some of these things would work anyway, so... If we can give a quick reaction to Alan, um, I think it's an inevitable problem. If you have a big language that has a lot of features, there will be small details that you will get wrong. At some point, you will be able, you will be in a need to fix them, and either your language is unused, then you can fix them and break it and tell the users to upgrade, or your language is popular, and breaking it will be impossible without going to a new namespace and giving people the chance to do a gradual upgrade. See also, for example, how Google updates their code. They make a compatible upgrade path, and then they gradually upgrade all the bits of code until it's done. <laughs> That's because they can they control all their code. Yes. I think I'm going to want to start taking a five-way poll on probably just the four positions on the screen unless somebody really wants me to write up a fifth, in which case they'll have to word it for me now. The idea of a five-way poll, we do this frequently uh, at the standards meetings, is not to try to gauge consensus on a feature. It's important to know not just if how popular it is, but the strength of the feeling. So we can go from a very strongly in favor of that thing as written through I'm generally in favor, I'm neutral, don't like that idea, and you know, strongly really don't like that idea. So we vote on that continuum, you get, and we're going to have a five-way poll on each of these four positions because it's not, we'll have different strength of feeling across these, and then we can try and gauge a consensus once we have all those polls in is the way this would work in committee. So are you ready for me to start taking the polls, Bryce? So, uh, poll for the first one, a reimagining of the standard, meaning we're prepared to make wide-ranging breakage, but essentially try and ha address the same problem sets and carry on uh, in the new namespace. Strongly in favor of that position. I can have to stand up and count hands. <laughs> I count 13. If you can possibly count as a, a, a backup for me, just make sure I'm not missing any hands. Okay, so in favor of the notion of the re, the reimagining. Yeah. You get one vote, sorry. One, two, three. Is that a hand up in the middle or, the, uh, or is that someone just scratching their head? Scratching your head, okay. I make that six. Okay. Uh, neutral. Not counting any hands. Against this notion of a, a breaking, big breaking change. I just count the one. And strongly against the idea of the big breaking change. Wow, well, we have a bunch of radicals here. <laughs> um, consider the venue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is perhaps less surprising. Yeah, <laughs> not just the conference, but also yes. the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm just curious as to what, why, why, why you voted. Uh, um, yeah, so um, you're really against. Uh, I'm weakly against this, uh, but I could probably con be convinced otherwise. My biggest concern is that. Uh, overall, the C++ community is going to be worse off if we have two stood strings and two containers of everything. Um, this is a huge expense, and I think we really need to consider that if we're thinking long-term, uh, like what the real effect of this is going to be. 
There's a bunch of C++ code out there. Okay, so I'm going to pull the, the second position then, which is essentially a like for like where we fix the, the small niggles, but we don't do any whole scale replacements such as saying, let's have a whole new IO stream library. Let's have a completely different string type. Uh, so those who would be strongly in favor of taking this as a vision for the new library. And remember, you can vote in favor of as many as you like to be in favor of. Just one vote for each poll. Those strongly in favor of this position. I'm seeing no hands. Did I miss any? Okay. Those who are generally in favor of this as a position. I count five hands. Neutral? Nope, or one. Uh, broadly against this idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I counted eight. How many, sir? Seven. Um, let's try those hands again. I got eight again. Hmm? Great race fire. I got 10 that time. Okay, that was against, wasn't it? So strongly against. I count four hands. Not getting a whole lot of love for that position. Okay, so we keep STD2 as a new namespace for new things, and we do not try and clone STD into STD2. So a whole new place for easy extensions. Those who would be strongly in favor of using STD2 this way. I count two. Those who are generally in favor of using STD2 this way. Nine. Uh, neutral? I count six. Uh, broadly against this kind of restriction? Two. I'm gonna actually move myself to, to, to yeah. You're managing the count, so you can do that. <laughs> uh, strongly against this restriction. <coughs> I can't just the one. <laughs> Explain. Yeah. No like we have the microphone. Oh, yeah. Uh, the no like for like duplication. Um, if we have something better, then we should move it over. But that doesn't necessarily mean that. We have to copy everything, even if we don't have a better thing. If that just didn't say no like for like, then I'd be strongly in favor. I don't understand the advantage of it being like when you put it in STD. Because we want to reuse names. So a good example would be something like the ranges library, where we're going to be using a lot of the same algorithm names, and we don't want to be treading on eggshells to avoid ambiguities between ranges and iterators in the library interface. SDD2 is a great place to just free ourselves from that kind of a concern. So the final option is we don't need no stinking new library. Let's just keep moving forward with STD and applying whatever fixes we can get away with applying there. And SDD2 can be a wonderful project sometime in the future, but we don't need it now. Mm -hmm. It means accepting the process a standard goes through that if you want a broader breaking change in STD, you're prepared to fight for it there rather than assuming that we're going to get it there. Yeah. It, moving forward in the same ramshackle way we have, trying to make incremental improvements through the committee. So, those who therefore think we don't need STD2 at all at this point, we should continue enhancing just STD. Strongly in favor. I see no hands. Generally in favor. Four. Neutral. Two. Uh, generally against this notion. I got eight. And strongly against. 
Six. I think there was strong, from memory, it sounded like strong support for one and reasonable support for three. Does that correspond to what the towers you're seeing there? Strong support for the whole reimagining yeah. and reasonable support for just keeping the namespace for new extensions. Uh, yes. And no real support for the middle position and over, more against than four on the final one. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the first one was this. Number two was, was ten against, four strong against, and, and five yeah. against. So, really so. so the sense of the room is somewhere between one and three, I think. So if Maybe there's another way. Maybe instead of STD2, we need STD old. Maybe keep STD evolving. And occasionally breaking things, but uh, moving the thing, a copy of the thing that's been broken in std old. in but case you really know, you really want that. We do, not, we do not have the namespace std old though. Yeah, I know, I know. We, and we, we polled carefully to see what namespaces we thought we could get away with, so that's not really an option at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. STD minus one. <laughs> yeah, 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 something like that. STD zero. Uh, it, it, maybe it could give us more uh, flexibility to try to evolve STD. We would stay within the confine of STD. It would maybe avoid splitting the community into the STDs and the STD twos. Behind you, and then we've got two here, and then I'm going to try and move on three here, and then I'm going to try and move on to the next <coughs> topic. So, so, uh, so what I heard here is that instead of new namespace names, whatever they are, representing new versions, they represent old versions. We're counting backwards in time instead of forwards. We, yeah, that was my take of what Jean-Louis was saying as well. So my view on that is that if we take unbreaking changes and move them into a new namespace, that's a breaking change. So it makes more sense to me to have a new namespace for new things and keep the current namespace for current and backwards compatible things. If you moved a thing that is currently working in the broad realm of code and you stuck it in another namespace and you upgraded or updated, uh, the one in the current standard namespace, wouldn't that break existing code? Yep. That's pretty much what I wanted to say. So okay. <laughs> and I want to move on. So can we have this on the microphone just so it's recorded for the cameras? So um, the example I have in mind is, uh, is the, the IO stream. So, uh, for example, a while ago I discovered that in a implementation of the IO streams that you find in a Visual C++, uh, for each output of even an int, not only it goes through virtual function calls for uh, going through the facet mechanism, but it also logs. Uh, it was while exploring you know, logging at Bloomberg. Uh, it seems that on Linux, uh, on, on GCC, it doesn't lock. So um, I, I would like um, the, the standard library to say something about it. And I would like it to say that uh, IO streams don't lock, but that can be discussed. So that would be a breaking change. Um, so uh, I guess that we could put a more constrained version. We, would, we could change um, the STD IO stream into a more constrained version. But, if, but for some reason, we could put the old IO stream in STD old and uh, I'm not claiming that it, it, there would be a, a great benefit into it, but it may give us more freedom to evolve STD and allow people who really wanted the old behavior to still get it, at least as a transitory measure. Because I, I'm also concerned about uh, having I a split between STD and- I do want to get moving on. Sorry, David, I want to move on towards the next topic. 
which is the analog of the one we were just asking, which is if we're doing all this radical new stuff in STD2, what is the future of STD? Do we see this continuing in parallel into the future? Do we see an eventual total migration so that STD2 is just the way to do things? So I came up with a notion of you know, three poles al along this axis. Um, an implicit assumption here is that um, if we're doing STD2 for the new stuff, where, where do the concepts fit? I, I, my mental model is STD2, it, looking at this, is concepts from day one. And because STD doesn't have concepts today, it continues on in that kind of a vein. That might be unduly influencing the way I've drafted these questions. So I'm very happy for somebody else to also give me the, the drafting I got wrong. With that, I'm open to the opening the floor again. Microphone here, please. Okay. Um, so one way to look at it is to see that STD is something that people are using a lot, and any change we could do there will be breaking to whatever they already have. So STD2 should be a, a universal new interface, and you shouldn't need to use anything from STD, but STD should be evolving along with it and be usable together with it, as in you can't deprecate it, you can't remove it. That's, well, I think... You know, for reasons you brought up in your earlier talks, you know, it's clear we can't deprecate the entirety of STD. Um, and what I want to know is, in the first bullet, if you mean piecemeal deprecation as we find that individual parts are too bad to, to continue, or if you mean a global... Um, I, I'm thinking the long-term vision of once STD to reaches, reaches some level of completeness and maturity equivalent to STD. At that point, would you be saying STD2 is, n is now preferred and SD one can be not necessarily removed, but deprecated, and that was the thrust. Okay, I, I would argue for a bullet point, which is, which is piecemeal deprecation. <laughs> So if, if you think about the, the scale of the amount of C++ code that's out there and the amount of developers that there are working on it, eventually we're going to have a lot more code than there are developers that can maintain it. And maintaining, and, and if, the, if what's involved in maintaining this old software, which is being used by a lot of clients, but there's no developer actively maintaining it, if, if the requirement is that we go in there and manually convert all the old ideas to the new ideas, that's just a non-starter. You could deprecate it all you want. Nobody is going to implement this because it's just infeasible. There's not enough developers to actually do this. So I think that I actually really like Jean-Louis idea. I think I thought it was brilliant to, to make a STD old because then refactoring the older code is basically just changing it to a different namespace. That's something that's reasonable. Then that's something that could be staged over several revisions of the language. But you know, just deprecating STD one, it's, it's just impossible. I can't see that working ever. So it makes sense to me to have std two or uh, the original std namespace be kind of like the stable release where backwards compatibility is supported, changes are more slow, and have std two be something that's more modern. Um, we're more open to. Um, breaking changes for good reasons, and it evolves more quickly. I can see us continuing on with std2, and then at some point, we'll just stop activity on std. All the existing code keeps working. If you want to live in that space, you can. We don't have to worry about compilers not revving, which is what's going to happen. And all those people are still using GCC 2.9 can keep on using GCC 2.9. The idea that the old library doesn't break every time core update the language and forget to tell us how the changes have broken the library interface is optimistic. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll hold my position and say it's bound to the to the compile to the tool chain. That means you're you're just stuck with the tool chain too. But it's your choice. So I I think I partially uh, agree with David in that I so. I'm going to say it this way. 
I think at some point in the future, I would like to deprecate stood, but I never want to remove it. And I know that deprecation means that it's like warning for removal. So what I actually want is something different that's like, this is still here. This will always be here. But if you're doing a new project, if you're writing something from scratch, you might want to use the new version of this library. But I, I don't I don't want I don't think that it, it would be feasible for us to 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 sort of say at any point in the future. Well, I don't know. Maybe maybe at some very far distant point in the future. But I don't think within our lifetimes it's going to be viable to to say we're going to take away uh, stood as we have it today. And I see lots of hands um, coming up. I just wanted to comment about uh, something I think Gaspar said earlier about you know once we have things in uh, in STD two and you can we can continue to evolve them with with so. um, with potential breaking changes. Um, I can tell you that once something gets put in the standard, um, the, the, the strong feeling on the standards committee and the, the people on the committee who represent user bases, that the, the acceptable amount of breakage in, a, in the standard library is darn near zero. That's not what I said. Okay, well, sorry, I misattributed it. Somebody else. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. But in any case, you will find that to be an extremely tough sell on the committee. What I said was when you, you have a problem? breaking change, you increment the version, okay. but just for that component. Um, I think um, while the words may not have come out the same, I am somewhat in agreement with Bryce and, and David, which with my position for piecemeal deprecation. Certainly, if we see much the same facility in STD2 as, as STD, we know that the STD2 one is going to last longer. Um, we can keep the things in STD as long as is feasible, but if they become too much of a burden, they are the ones that are going to go first. And we see that already. We've deprecated auto pointer. We have unique pointer now. We've removed auto pointer. Yeah. We have removed auto pointer. So yeah, things in S. That was a tough, yeah. tough fight. But <laughs> things in STD do eventually go away when they become too much burden. If I can take a, an analogy to a different uh, programming language that also had the same thing, it's not strictly a programming language, but if I look at OpenGL. <laughs> They basically started with version 1, which had the abstractions at the time. After a while, they, it became clear that they were out of date. They developed an OpenGL 3, which deprecated the old one and didn't actively remove it. And by now, there's a complete replacement in essentially OpenGL 4.5. But all the vendors are still able to just provide the old ones because all their customers still really want them to. <laughs> That's basically constraining the language to the things that we want but allowing the compiler vendors to ship all the things that they used to have as long as it still keeps working. Yeah, you? So the question that came to my mind is, do we want people that are sitting down in a new file, in a new C++ file, to choose the new version that they want to use or to choose the old version that they want to use? Should the default be to use the newest, or should the default be to use the oldest? And so if we start using numerics to count up which uh, for the old versions as we break them, then we're saying that, and this is, I'm taking the same position, that it, it counting up for old versions means that we default to always having the latest in standard. And so people that are just starting a new file don't have to think about which version to tie themselves to until they get a breaking change and decide to stick to some older version. So I've got a quick comment and we'll go back down this way. Um, so <clears throat> my, my comment is that, you know, if you, if you have a stood old or stood or whatever, um, you know, that is an implicit deprecation of anything that's in there and also a breaking change. And so, you know, that's just the comment on that. And, you know, with respect to your comment, um, you have to pick standard anyway, right? When you, you either have to use any or whatever, you know, it's, you don't just get it. You, you say, I want this. You have to think about the number. That's fair. But you got to think about it if it stood old or stood no, dot O. Standard is always the latest. I never have to think about the number. 
then then you're always breaking everyone's code as soon as. Then all I have to do is change the number. No. No. No, you've changed the ABI as well, and that makes a complete relink, rebuild the world. No, and you might not no. control the world. Uh, sorry, I'm interrupting. So, can we have the microphone here? Just so the comments are on camera. <laughs> so, in order to not break the ABI, when standard changes its contents in a breaking way, you only have to go back to your code and pick a version of the old STD that has been produced to isolate you from that breaking change. And so the only time you think about whether to what version to pick is when you've encountered a breaking change that is stopping you from recompiling the world. The language breaks the library and therefore we need to rebuild the library with the new ABI even for the old code because the core have changed a rule that means we've now got to render the library slightly differently to have the same impact. Right. So then your compiler vendors either have to update the old versions to keep running with their new car compiler. I'm not saying they will. Anyway. I'm saying they would have to, or the person has to also keep the old compiler. I agree. You can pass this forward. Thank you. Let me ask you, do you use header-only libraries ever? I write them. It, it, so let's say I use your library, and you use stud vector, and you use the current allocators, and I use your library, and then this comes along and forcefully renames your vector to uh, stud, one, stud 2 or whatever. Um, I can fix my code, but I can't fix yours. No, I can't because I want to have a clean upstream distribution. I cannot fix it. Um, anyone? Right. Jean-Louis, I'm going to sort of move on to essentially the next slide. Um, so, so I'm, I'm trying think to figure out what I want to poll here. I had a variety of opinions pulled out. Uh, I'm thinking of a concrete case. Uh, we don't have a standard facility to access uh, relational databases yet. And it is a subject I'm interested in. So let's suppose I want to start working on that. Do I do it in STD2 or in STD? Uh, when will STD2, if it's the ambitious version of STD2, when will it be good enough and ready and tried and tested? And what if I want to support both an iterator-based interface and a range-based interface for I don't know, uh, iterating over relational database tables. Uh, I, th I think that if, if we go that way, it, it may be decades before we get a library for accessing relational databases because either we put it in, in STD, but it's left behind, or we put it in STD2 and it will take a long time to come. Um. My, my suggestion is is do it in Boost. <laughs> Seriously, do it in Boost, get a user base, experiment, iterate, and then come to the Standards Committee and say, we have experience, we have a, we have a design, it works, we have users, they're happy. Don't, don't try to iterate in the standard library. Don't try to develop new things as much. <laughs> it happens, and I hate it. So Bryce had some suggestions on polling. Yeah, so, so I think, uh, and I, so I think there are a few of us who said this, that, that, I, that I, I would like to see clarification on, on, on one, or I don't want to be too optimistic, but mm -hmm. um, uh, does, does the deprecate for one mean that it would eventually be omitted, or, or does deprecate mean that it's just legacy but not true? Deprecate does not mean remove, although people often have ambitions to remove stuff once it's deprecated. Um, so... I was trying to not pick an answer there because you pick one and it will change over time. But deprecate by itself does not mean remove. That's why I chose deprecate rather than remove. 
it means it's active discouragement and says the standard is less concerned about this. So if we have a, a new version of the language that would break that library, we'll do the minimum necessary to unbreak it rather than enthusiastically adopt new language features. It, that would be the notion of deprecation, I believe. And no compiler will use the user Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's, it, I, well, if this is a QOI hmm. thing, I think uh, you, you said vendors A encouraged to not have that feature because it's more than with W all of them would use it and just use it. <laughs> But I think if I quickly run, run down the three things, I, I, now I've looked at my poll question, I can see what I was asking a bit more clearly. Notion one is STD2 is the planned future replacement, and ultimately all new work will go into STD2, and STD will slowly wither and fade away. The middle option is that we're going to have STD and STD2 indefinitely going forward, but given that the inspiration for STD2 is something like doing concepts right, which might change our abstractions, STD2 is a library built around concepts, and STD1 fundamentally remains an unconstrained library and helps guide work which goes each way. And the third option is no, they're just two fully independent libraries coexisting, and there is no notion of restricting things in STD because it belongs better in STD2. We make that choice on a case-by-case -case basis. And I think that was my notion I was trying to get to with the three options, having had that discussion and probably tried to clarify things too late. Does that seem a more a reasonable way to poll this? In that case, hopefully on that more recent understanding, I'll, uh, do we want to five-way polls or just one poll, pick your op poison? I, I like five-way polls. Okay. Okay. Right. We'll take a poll on that. <laughs> five-way. <laughs> well, let, let's do the five-way then. Just <laughs> quicker to do it than to debate whether to do it. Okay, so those who be strongly in favor that STD2 is the future and ultimately STD1 will be deprecated and go into maintenance mode. Strongly in favor. One, two, three. I count nine. Nine, okay. Generally in favor of that notion? Five, six, that's a light riser. Uh, neutral? None? One, two. <laughs> Any more? Okay, two. Uh, generally against this notion that STD1 will wither and die? Or maybe not die, but wither. Two. And strongly against that notion. Okay, uh, with a clean slate. Um, the idea that we live with STD and STD2, and STD2 is fundamentally a concepts-based library, and STD1 is not, and they just live independently doing their own thing. Strongly in favor of that kind of demarcation. I see no one. Generally in favor of that kind of demarcation. I see three. Neutral. One, two, three, four. Okay, seven. Uh, against that kind of uh, restriction? I count six. Uh, strongly against. Count two. And again, clean slate. Um, they're just two libraries that live side by side, and we will pick location of new proposals as they come through. Uh, strongly in favor. One. Uh, generally in favor. Five. Uh, neutral. Three. Against. Four. And strongly against. I counted five. We have a microphone. So I find it difficult to vote for an option when I have no idea what the criteria for whether something goes in stood or stood to is. And so I might be willing to change my stance on that if that were more well defined. I mean, that's part of what I've done a bad job of trying to tease out here. But uh, the time's running, I'm going to move on to try and get some notion on at least the next slide. 
which is when it comes to finally shipping STD2, um, how much do we think we, is the minimum payload that we can move into the standard? How mature does it have to be before we start landing it versus advancing it in experimental namespaces in TSs? So, you know, the, the keen version would say, we think ranges is fantastic. We'll land that straight away in C++20. It's almost ready now. And we'll just keep adding there because that's our clean extension forward. Another notion would be, well, we want to at least make sure that, you know, we've got a few data structures and things that are also built using concepts. So they, we don't need to tweak the basic concepts we've got in there. I mean, a basic kernel of doing programming. So data structures, algorithms, and probably the concurrency parts. And the... The other extreme is we have a fully developed library, so it's a fully ca as capable as STD before we say now it's time to actually move it into the standard. Mm -hmm. And obviously each of these options, the more you require, the longer it will take to develop, and that's what we're talking about trading off. And the more eagerly we push, the less maturity you'll have because there will have been less time for some of the feedback. So we'll start with Bryce and move this way, if we can move the microphone. Um, I, I, first of a quick clarifying question, Alistair. If, if we were, are we required or are we under any obligation to put library features and TSs into stood, experiment, stood colon colon experimental? Or could we have a stood2 TS where uh, it's just a namespace stood2, but it's in a TS, not in the IS? We could always make whatever rules we like. SDD2 is a whole new namespace, but the expectation would be if we're doing TSs, there would be stood or stood to experimental. Um, I, the experimental was yeah. a deliberately chosen policy. We can change policy at some point. If you bake it as stood to without the experimental, yeah, yeah. you'll find it very hard to evolve it. That's why the experimental came in. Um, so so, so I, I think I that, that option seems very attractive to me because... Uh, it, it, it seems like it's a way for us to get something out there that people could start playing with, and, but it will not. Uh, it will not have. It, it'll be able to iterate faster, basically. Yeah, I was going to say I, I would be supportive of std2 experimental rather than putting it in std experimental. That way, at least it's in its right home. This is part of the reason why I voted strongly in favor of the third option in the previous slide, which is. If we make stud and stud2 separate libraries, at least initially, and we, we basically have the option of figuring it out later. And that allows us to, within vision, ship ranges. Because it's a, you know, like, do we want all the algorithms already in there? We don't need them. We're not shooting for a replacement. We just have this nifty little widget ranges i mean okay it's a little more than a widget but <laughs> uh it, and we can put it there and we're not saying oh we're going to deprecate the world no everything's still there and here's ranges well hidden in the ranges ts is also our primary concept vocabulary so that i think is the more fundamental bet you're making when you land ranges the thing that i noticed in your question was that you basically have two different concepts which is the maturity and the size and it looks like you're polling both. Kind of. It's, yes, I'm polling the feature set you think is necessary before we think it's mature, was my notion. Yeah, because I would say that if you have a, an immature thing, you should definitely not be shipping it as something that is the new standard uh, library startup. I, mean, or, or I guess I'm looking for a notion of maturity is how well does the whole thing hold together? If I've got a small part... The small part might feel mature, but it's not integrated with what follows yet. So is it as mature as I think it is? Is it mature to release at that point? That was the thrust of my thinking here. Um, I, I think that there's an aspect of maturity that um, goes against what you said, which was you suggested that if we did the whole thing, we would end up with a fully mature library. Um, I suspect if we do the whole thing, we're going to end up with a w with some important fully mature parts followed by some things that got rushed at the last minute so that we could get the th uh, get a whole thing, which is why I feel better about um, doing one thing at a time and releasing them. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I agree completely with what Lisa just said. And I'd like to point out that um, while I very much favor the TS model for almost all these changes, um, the Ranges TS has been around the block quite a bit, and it's got a very nice um, uh, implementation. Lots of people have been using this third-party library already with – uh, you know, with with that that whole design in place, um, and so I think that um, it, with ranges in particular, that's why I favor number one. That I think it's 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 baked enough, and it represents I think um, what at least I would like to see in in uh, um, stood two, uh, so that I think it's it's ready to go in. And it provides a foundation for the rest of the work. I just like to point out that no standard library implementer has implemented the ranges TS. And so I do not, cons I consider it an, an impressive body of work and I, I like it a lot. I'm looking forward to implementing it. But until we have it in, in a standard library implementation where we can look for conflicts and also we can determine if in fact the specification is sufficient to be, to implement it, then I don't consider it baked. So, 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 so I, and I, I have, I have particular familiarity with third-party implementations of the third-party library implementations of TSs because um, I have one and I, I I feel very strongly that that the bar for a third-party implementation even a good one even one that 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 is very committed to following the spec it is a very different bar from the bar of one of the major standard library vendors shipping and if you it, it's just the uh, the degree of robust, robustness that your project demands is very different when you're the standard library versus third party. Can we have the microphone just so you're... Uh, while it's moving, I will check myself just to say that when I'm asking this question, I'm not looking for how mature is ranges today. It's known we're still evolving it. But if we got just ranges, is that sufficient proof of maturity that the concepts backing ranges are the fundamental concepts that, yes, this is good STD2. We do not need to see more to believe that this mature library is the mature foundation. And that's exactly what I was getting at. Um, so to the extent that the TS is deemed to be ready and then we're putting it into the, the working paper, I want us to put it in in STD2. That's what I'm getting at. You don't want to hold stood two up for more than that. That alone, we, th we believe, is. That's right. Or, that's put it, yeah. or put it into stood one and then have a maintenance headache. Any other hands? <clears throat> yeah, so uh, like you said, the, the TS is not fully finished. I, I take both those those notes. The, the, those are good notes. But the point is that once the TS is considered finished, we have implementations, we're ready to put in the WP, then I want to see us put it into stood two. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Any other opinions, or do I just poll this? Uh, I just wanted to briefly say, I think some other things that are currently in flight should target stood two. For example, I think executors should target stood two because it interoperates with things in stood that we know we need to fix in a bridging way, like stood two transfer. That's all. And I think we can take that on a TS by TS basis yeah. once we know where we're going. But, um, so uh, three, five ways or one quick, just pick, pick your favorite poison here. One quick, one quick one. Okay. I, I'm just going to pull it because time's quit running. So those who feel that starting with range is um, we're, we're shipping, let's get going, is the right option. If if ranges has deemed past the maturity that we described, we should be targeting ranges because we believe it's already engaged. It's three years away. It's a good shot for getting it ready. If ranges is ready for 20, we should land it without waiting for other features. How about uh, just do experimental and not that? So I, I'd like to dump that in with that. I, well, I, I would like to make a pitch where I think we missed it when the ranges TS came up for review, but, but if we do a, a future TS, that we would be pitching it as a stood to experimental as part of the TS process. So. Experimental is for TS, not for IS. So strongly in favor that if ranges, is, we, we should shoot to try to make ranges ready for 20, in fact. Did you just switch to highway on us? No, we're doing pick your favorite. Okay. Yeah. So of the three positions you believe we should push ahead and make ranges, 
That's our ambition. That's the way we launched. Best way to launch Stud 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think I got 10. Um, those who would rather say we want to get a bit more support for the foundation, so we'll have you know some data structures like containers, in addition to the algorithms from ranges, and maybe some concurrency primitives, and a slightly higher bar before we know we've got a coherent whole as the foundation. I count four. And those who would really like to see essentially STD2 as a fully mature replacement for STD or analog of STD until we land it or whatever ultimate vision we have for SDD2. I count one. Um, I'm, I feel like I would be comfortable shipping ranges, but, but there are prerequisites of ranges that like I would like to 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 see concepts ships first before I can really speak to the the ranges being sufficient because like its dependency I don't know I don't know if its dependency is 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 uh, robust yet so I'd want to see that ship first um, uh, and as for three I'm I'm not certain that I feel that that it needs to be one TS but I think um, I I do kind of like the TS model but I'm not saying I don't want I don't want ranges to be the kernel it's just that. I don't like I, I I don't think that ranges is, is something that's uh, even if it's ready I don't think it's as ready as it needs to be given that it is built on top of a a new language feature that really kind of radically changes the language. So I'm going to quickly switch tack, which goes back to my first talk of if we're talking about shipping STD two and building b baking it on top of the right foundation of language features, which language features are essential for STD2, so we shouldn't ship STD2 unless we've got these things available to be incorporated correctly, which is a real pressure to get these into C++20 if we believe that becomes a vital part of getting an STD2 library kernel into that same standard. Um, I'll probably just do a five-way on these. Um, Notion is that the strongly in favor is yes, we absolutely need that for the new library, and strongly against is actually I don't want that feature at all. I think it could be harmful for the library. So if you're neutral, strongly vote neutral. I, you know, I really want to make the against mean something. Can you pass it back to Lisa? So I have a question about the poll, which is, um, is this, how does this relate to our opinions of which of these are likely to be in fully usable form by, say, 20? Um, I, I feel much more confident in some of these features than others being ready by then. I think we should not worry about the schedule for these. We're talking about what our ambitions be, how important we think they are, and that is then strong encouragement to make that focus on those within the schedule. This is partly my goal here is to have guidance and feedback to the evolution of core working groups to say the library group feel these are essential because we really need to use them in the library. And the neutral says, yeah, I like them, but I don't think it's essential that the library is held up waiting for them, and then against this, actually that might be harmful for the library. That's my notion of these five-way polls. Um, are we going to have a small discussion before voting on each? Uh, I think I'm running out of time because I've got four <laughs> minutes. Okay, so I'll make a quick comment. I really believe that compile time reflection is essential to building a good database library. But is that essential if it's in on the ground stages of STD2? For instance, if we think shipping the kernel of ranges is enough, do I need all of these for ranges? Will I do ranges wrong or change ranges in a fundamental way if these come along afterwards? That's the kind of essence I'm trying to tease out here. It's a prioritization as much as anything else. And with that, I'm going to start taking the polls. <coughs> So if we have modules, we have an STD2 that we can build totally around modules and forget header files, yay. Um, do we think modules are a vital feature for planning STD2? Strongly in favor. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
I got 15. Uh, generally in favor that it's good, but maybe not hold the library up for it. I got two, but yeah, three, sorry. Uh, neutral. One. Against. Modules are actually a missed feature. We probably don't want them. Or they do active harm for the library. None. Strongly uh, concerned by modules. Okay. Next one. <coughs> concepts. Strongly in favor that we need to get concepts in as the foundation of the new library. Fifteen. Uh, generally in favor, but we wouldn't have to hold the library up waiting for them. Three. Uh, neutral? None. Any hands I haven't counted yet? Okay. You're strongly against concepts going in to this. Okay. Cool. And I presume that's because you don't like the current specification of the feature. Um, I shouldn't presume I should let you answer yourself. Do you have the microphone? I, I was much, uh, I was a much stronger supporter of concepts before uh, I started using them. Um, based on based on usage experience, I do not think that the current feature is anywhere close to something that I would, I would want to work with. Um, I can't do anything higher order with it. The syntax is there's there's like three syntaxes for doing everything, and. Uh, you have to write requires twice, which is like, I can't even, I can't believe that we've really iterated to this design. Um, I think that we really, I think that it's very risky for us to, to, to consider shipping at this time. But, all, but the reason why I voted strongly against is none of those things. The reason I, why I voted strongly against is because um, I really want to see a proof of concept uh, that, uh, no pun intended, that concepts <laughs> can be deployed in a standard library um, and that that standard library will, will not have an increase in uh, uh, compilation time. There are exponential overheads in some of the mechanisms in the compiler that um, are used uh, to implement concepts. And I want to see a standard library implemented with concepts before I'm, I'm like comfortable shipping the feature because I, there's been a lot of things that concepts are supposed to deliver on that they haven't. And if they actually end up being slower than Sphine, that would not be good. Alistair, just, just, Sorry, I, just I don't have time to take because I've got, uh, I need this, to get through the questions. Okay, just very briefly, um, I would, I voted strongly in favor. I would have voted weakly against if it was talking about this particular concept yeah. proposal, but there is some concept proposal that we need. Yeah. And that, that, and that was essentially the sense of what I was trying to pull. That, thank you for teasing out <laughs> the sense of the room. Um, Contracts. How essential is it that contracts are baked in from day one when we start working on a new standard library? Uh, those strongly in favor. And counting one. Those generally in favor. Six. Yep. Neutral? Nine. Uh, those against were concerned that cut back con contracts. Two. And those who think contracts do active harm. One. Uh, do you want to give a quick, uh, a light hand at the back too? Oh, okay, well, if I can have a, a quick comment from the person who was strongly against rather than, because uh, I really need to move on with the polls. Oh, I was neutral. Ah. Um, I'm, I'm very in favor of contracts, but I, and I think we should, d you know, design the things that we add into SDD2 with contracts in mind, but they are something that it's possible to add um, after the fact um, and and the, uh, ultimately come up with the same solution. I don't think they should hold My counter example there is we have vector at and vector square bracket, and if we had contracts, we might yeah. have only one, so it does affect the design choices early on. Well, I would just, uh, I would just not have at but. to begin with. Uh, yeah, the only reason I was strongly against is because I think we need some kind of implementation experience with this particular feature that I feel like more comfortable with the other ones. My sense was if you're just waiting for implementation experience, I'd have rather had a neutral rather than I believe the feature, even with experience, would do harm. That's okay. the notion I'm trying to get to with the against. Okay, but fair enough. So change my strongly against to an against then. Okay. Um. Marshall? Sorry. I've got 
swung wrong, but not quite that long. <clears throat> yes, I, I voted against because I think I might be arguable out of this position. But I think when you describe in the end what strongly against is, I might be closer to that. I think that contracts could very well, if we do contracts as an essential feature in this, I could think it could very well be also be the essential feature in STD3. I'm three minutes over, so I really want to see how many of these I can get through. If you, I'm three minutes over, so feel free to run out on me if you wish at this point. Um, Coroutines, are they an essential part of the new standard? Okay. Uh, strongly favor, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, they're a good idea, but they mean we, we can retrofit them if we need to. One, two, three, four, five, six. You eight. Okay, let's try hands higher again, please. I got seven, yeah. Oh, the late eight at the back. Um, Maybe. Neutral is, I, I, I don't see these things tied together. <coughs> Yeah, it just means I don't see them tied as being an essential part of the library. It, you know, it's not a bad feature, but it's not essential to... That's what you, when, when you describe four, it sounds yeah. a bit like that. So, so yeah. Confused. Four is I think the library is going to make good use of them. Neutral is, yeah, well... So I'm, I'm four, I'm yeah. neutral. I don't know. Okay, yeah. well, well, let's, let's take the neutral part, which we get two more interfaces. Yeah. So, neutrals. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Those who think coroutines could do active harm, one. Or those who believe, sorry, rather than think they would do active harm, strength, but yeah. Um, moving on, compile time reflection. Is it essential we have that before we start shipping STD2 is a strong way in favor? So who, who believes compile time reflection is essential before we baked enough to release a library to be the new foundation? Which again is essentially the strength I was looking for on the previous ones. I'm just getting better at saying it. I count none. Those who believe compile time reflection is important for the new library. I got nine. Those who are neutral. I got nine again. Uh, those who have concerns about um, compile time reflection. I'm not seeing any. And those who are mortified by the idea of compile time <laughs> reflection. And again, runtime run reflection, same poll. Those who believe it's essential to have runtime reflection before we start shipping a new library. I hear crickets. Um, those who believe it's still an important thing we need to push for before we ship a new library. Count two. Those who are neutral. I count ten. Those who are concerned that runtime reflection could actually cause problems for a new library. Yep. And you also have strong concerns that runtime reflection could be a bad direction for the language. Five. So I was strongly concerned about uh, runtime reflection. Not counting anyone. <coughs> I probably don't have time for the second slide. Uh, I mean, I'm not going anywhere if you don't want to count anyone. If anyone wants to call you, yeah, just quickly, po quickly poll them. Those thinking, you know, if you saw the language session on uh, Herb's uh, TIE fighter operator, the comparison operator, um, those who think that's yeah, um, an essential feature before we start designing our value types for the new library. I guess say it basically for value types. If we don't have value types, it wouldn't hold us up. I count three hands. Uh, he thinks that it'll be useful, but isn't essential. Four hands. Who are neutral on the topic? 
Nine hands. Uh, those who have concerns about this new operator? I don't see any. And those who know this new operator is actively harmful? I don't count any hands there. Okay. Idea of a uniform call syntax. So that you can, member functions and free functions can be called through the same calling convention, call, same syntax. Uh, strongly in favor that this is something we need as we start designing the APIs of a new library. I count two. Those who are generally in favor that it will help us design better APIs. Four, five, six, I count seven. Are those who are neutral on the subject? One, two, three, four, five, six. Was that your hand, Bryce? Okay. Six. Was that neutral? Or again? Those who have concerns about the um, idea of uniform call syntax? I count two. And those who feel it's going to do active harm for libraries if this becomes available? I count two, and this is the only one I'm going to vote on, three. <laughs> Uh, didn't mention operator dot in terms of proxies at all. Um, I'm not sure we had sufficient information this week to reasonably poll that unless everyone feels they already know this well enough. Is there a sense of folks in the room who feel this is something to poll? I vote strongly against. I, I, I suspect, I sus uh, is there a sense in the room from people who are not community mm -hmm. members that they know enough about this issue to vote? Because I'm sure they, they think you need to vote. Um, is there the proposal where you get mm -hmm. I, I'm just not hearing enough <laughs> that we want to spend time following it. Yeah. Final one, the ability to overload in some way on const expo. Are those who think this is an essential feature for the new library? I don't see any hands. I don't understand it well enough either. We don't think it's fair enough to poll that. Okay, I'll, I'll be done. Thank you. <laughs>